My name's Tim Holt. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in Montgomery, Alabama and practice at Montgomery Spine Center. My practice is basically an adult degenerative and deformity practice, primarily dealing with a degenerative disease of the spine. Common causes of low back pain include degenerative disc disease, degeneration of the lumbar spine, spinal stenosis, disc herniations, and then also you see sacroiliac joint dysfunction and degeneration can be a big part of it. The SI joint is a joint that's located around the pelvis and it is the primary weight-bearing joint of the upper torso to the lower torso. SI joint pain can present as pain in the lower part of the back and one of the tests for it is called Fortin's finger sign where you ask the patient to point exactly to where the pain is and typically they'll point to the lower part of the back around the posterior superior iliac spine. People have a little dimple there and they'll say, well, it hurts in my dimple. Also, you see pain into the groin, you can see pain down the leg, but most of the time it kind of stops around the knee. People who suffer from SI joint dysfunction typically have difficulty going up, downstairs. They have trouble sitting for long periods of time because of pain and they typically try to shift from one position to the other. SI joint pain is typically based on the studies that are out there around 15 to 30 percent. In my practice, it's around 20, 25 percent of chronic low back pain. Patients who've had surgery on their lower back tend to develop more SI joint pain than other patients. I think there's a few studies out there that point toward about 40 percent of patients having increased SI joint pain after lumbar surgery. The diagnosis of SI joint pain is based on, number one, a history. You want to take a history of, well, it hurts when I roll over in bed. If I lay on the affected side, it can hurt. When you see a patient sitting there, you'll see them shift from left to right. They want to unload the affected side. Once you've got the history, then on your physical exam, there are five provocative tests that are done. And you're looking for three of those five to be positive to make that diagnosis. Then once you've gone through the provocative testing, then you recommend conservative measures. If they fail conservative measures, then what you're going to do is do an injection. And that's really the gold standard on making the diagnosis is an interarticular injection of the SI joint. The SI joint procedure that I do is a minimally invasive technique that utilizes triangular implants that have a porous coating that allows for bony ingrowth. I've been using the iFuse system that is designed by SI Bone. The procedure takes usually under an hour. Most patients go home the same day. Postoperatively, we have the patients go to touchdown weight bearing for the first three weeks. We like for them to get up and walk with physical therapists at the hospital prior to going home, so at least they have some idea of what they should be doing. I like the iFuse implant because number one, it's minimally invasive. Two, we know that we're getting good fusion rates because almost all of the literature and the studies that have been written are based on the iFU system. So I think it's a better product with more dependable outcomes. SI joint pain has been overlooked and is still overlooked in a lot of practices. At Montgomery Spine Center, I've been doing SI joint fusions for several years. You can contact us here at Montgomery Spine Center and I'll be more than happy to try to help you with your problem.